Here we're going to look at a nice and fairly quick algebra problem from the 1983 AIM. So we want to find the product of the real roots of this radical equation. So we've got x squared plus 18x plus 30 equals 2 times the square root of x squared plus 18x plus 45. And I want to say that the way to do this is not just to square both sides and get rid of that square root. That'll leave you with something that's a little bit too hard to work with. We're gonna use a trick. But before we do that, I wanna recall that if you've got a monic polynomial, so that's a polynomial where the leading term has a coefficient of one, then over the complex numbers at least, you can factor it as x minus alpha one up to x minus alpha n, where alpha one up to alpha n are the roots. But then if you multiply that out, you'll have x to the n, you'll have a bunch of stuff in the middle, and then the constant term will be minus one to the n times alpha one up to alpha n, and notice that that is the product of the roots. So here we only want the product of the real roots, so we'll have to take that into account when we get there, but it's useful to recall this fact. Okay, so let's see what we can do here. So it's maybe important to notice that this x squared plus 18x plus 30 is almost exactly the same as this x squared plus 18x plus 45. In fact, we can take this x squared plus 18x plus 30 and rewrite it as x squared plus 18x plus 45 minus 15. Because clearly, 45 minus 15 is 30. So we're good to go there. And then we can leave the right-hand side as is. So we've got x squared plus 18x plus 45. Next, we can think about grouping the x squared plus 18x plus 45 on the left-hand side and rewrite it as the square root of x squared plus 18x plus 45 quantity squared. So let's do that. So we've got the square root of x squared plus 18x plus 45 quantity squared. So we got that from this thing with the peach parentheses. And then I'm going to move this over that we have minus 2 times the square root of x squared plus 18x plus 45. And then finally minus 15 equals 0. But notice that looks like a quadratic polynomial where the variable is the square root of x squared plus 18x plus 45. So in fact, we could just let u equal the square root of x squared plus 18x plus 45. And notice that this polynomial is really u squared minus 2u minus 15 equals 0. We're actually not going to make that substitution because it's not super necessary. But if you want to rename this big object, you know, some other simpler variable, that's okay. Okay, now being inspired by factorization of quadratic polynomials, we see that negative 5 and 3 multiply to negative 15 and they add to negative 2. So that'll give us a factorization of this thing. So we've got the square root of x squared plus 18x plus 45 minus 5 times square root of x squared plus 18x plus 45 plus 3 equals 0. And now we want to carefully look at this. And notice that this second factor does not contribute to any of the real roots. So let's just put no real roots from this factor. And that's because the square root of x squared plus 18x plus 45 plus 3 is always positive. But if it's always positive, then it's never equal to 0. But then if it's never equal to 0, then, well, it contributes no real roots. So that means all of our real roots come from setting this first factor equal to 0. So let's see what we get when we do that. We'll have the square root of x squared plus 18x plus 45 equals 5, so I'll move the 5 over. And then we can square both sides, and that gives us x squared plus 18x plus 45 equals 25, like that. And now we've really got two possibilities here. This thing could have two real roots, or it could have zero real roots. 
I guess it could have one real root of multiplicity too, but we don't really need to worry about that part because that's clearly not a perfect square binomial. But we can check the discriminant. So I'll denote the discriminant by delta. And that's the stuff under the square root in the quadratic formula. So here we have delta is b squared, that's 18 squared, minus 4 times a times c, so that's minus 80. So I don't even really need to calculate that. I can tell that that is strictly bigger than zero, meaning we have two real roots. And then applying this rule over here, we know what the product of the roots are even without calculating the roots. And so the product of the roots in our case is 20. And that's a good place to stop.